Second Peter chapter 3 verse 15 and 16. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 15 and 16. And account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul also according to the wisdom given unto him hath written unto you. Next verse. <clears throat> As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. So we see the way Brother Peter spoke, you know, with such strong validation where it comes to the Pauline theology. And he said there's an insight that has been given to Brother Paul when it comes to the subject of salvation. In fact, Peter calls Brother Paul's letters a loy pause. Loy pause, okay? That means Brother Paul's letters are weighty when it comes to, you know, explaining the Old Testament. In fact, what Peter is saying is, outside of Brother Paul's letters, every other letter in the Bible is the remainder. That is what remains, which means the substance of the interpretation of Scripture, the weight of it, is in the Pauline theology as we can see. And we've been doing quite some work here. We've looked at a number of building blocks, doctrinal building blocks. We've looked at a number of things. We are still laying the foundation to get into this teaching on Paul's ministry gifts. Yesterday, in the first and second service, we took time to travel quite some distance. I'll encourage anybody that is joining the teaching for the first time to please do yourself the favor. Go back on YouTube, Abel Damina Ministries International. That's a YouTube you know, uh, channel. Go there and look for In Christ Realities. Begin from, begin from part one, part two, part three, part four. To be able to understand what I'm going to be teaching today as part number, number, number as part five. Now yesterday we began to talk about the fact that Paul identifies the church of God as a people without a specific race. Look at the way Paul will speak about the church because we're looking at ministry gifts and we're laying foundation to arrive there. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse number 13. 1 Corinthians 12 13. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. So there's no race in the kingdom. Jews, Gentiles have become one in Christ Jesus. And by one spirit, all of us have been baptized into one body. And then we establish yesterday that you are not a member of the body of Christ because you joined a particular church. You have to be born into the body of Christ by believing the gospel. The gospel is the message of his death, burial, and resurrection. So now, we began to say that Paul uses the word church a lot. And he uses it in a dual way. Number one, he uses the word church, ecclesia, as a people. Number two, he uses the word church as a gathering. Number one, he uses the word church as a people. Number two, he uses the word church as a gathering. And we said one is built on the other. The gathering is built on the people. Elsewhere, apart from Corinthians, look at the way Brother Paul speaks about the church. In Ephesians chapter 1 verse 19 to 22. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 19 to 22. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us, word who believe, according to the working of his mighty power? Next verse. Which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Next verse. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world but also in that which is to come. Next verse. And hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church. He has put all things under his feet. Now give me verse 23. He's ch the church. Which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. The church, which is his body. So the church, there will be those who are believers in the gospel of Christ. Now pay attention, he says, the church, which is his body. Paul now called the church, the ecclesia, his body. The Greek word, soma. Soma is used for different things. Number one, the word soma is used for the physical body. The one we carry where you have your leg, you have your shoulder, you have your knee, you have your toes. Then there's another word, another meaning of that word soma. 
the word second meaning of the word soma is used for a person or the th what constitutes a person that is when you say this is his body you are saying this is what he is constituted of and the interesting thing is paul calls those gatherings the person of christ he calls this gathering called the church the person of christ do we find that in the words of jesus that he literally says that there is no you know that there is no 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 no, no union he says i will build my church it's like saying jesus saying i will build myself i will build my church it's like saying i will build my church myself because paul now makes us see that the church is the person of jesus christ himself so when jesus now says i will build my church what he was simply saying is i will build myself so if our verbiage again is from israel that means when the prophet will call jacob one person it will also call jacob a people jacob was a person jacob was a people and remember israel came out of jacob israel came out of jacob so jacob is a person and jacob is a people again i want you to realize we are beginning at moses and all the prophets to arrive at the exegesis on that word church so we're taking our narrative from the from the theology of moses we've already established that moses laid the building blocks for bible doctrine so you will see jacob as a person and you will see jacob as a people they were foreseeing what we are saying now a person and persons in him a person and persons in him israel the church christ the church give me ephesians chapter 3 verse 10 ephesians chapter 3 verse number 10 to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of god might be known by the church question a gathering or a people huh people people might be known by to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers might be known by the church a people not a gathering because it's the people that will teach the principalities and powers okay look at ephesians chapter 5 verse 23 ephesians chapter 5 verse 23 for the husband is the head of the wife even as christ is the head of the church and he is the savior of the body and he is the savior of the body a people or a gathering a people or a gathering please be thinking as we are reading a people okay then ephesians 5 24 ephesians chapter 5 verse 24 therefore as the church is subject unto christ so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything as the church is subject unto christ a people or a gathering huh huh as the church is subject unto christ a people a people give me verse 25 please think verse 25 husbands love your wives even as christ also loved the church and gave himself for it a people or a gathering a people 27 that he might present it to himself a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing but that it should be holy and without blemish a people or a gathering a people now look at paul's mirror paul is using the husband and wife one flesh one flesh relationship to explain the church and the christ he calls the church the body of christ body means the pressing or what constitutes christ or the expression of christ it means the pressing what constitutes christ or the expression of christ so as israel a people of god we are to figuratively be an expression of god he therefore calls one people many persons in one person he calls one people many persons in one person 
Look at Colossians chapter 1 verse 18. Colossians chapter 1 verse 18. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. That in all things he is the head of the body, the church. Give me verse 24 of Colossians 1. Colossians chapter 1 verse 24. Who now rejoice in my sufferings for you, and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church. For his body's sake, which is the church. Now let's, let us ask a few questions, because we are getting close to starting our study. Was Paul correct for the ecclesia that he called it the body of Christ? From the, narr the narrative we've looked at. Okay, So will you find what he is saying in what Jesus said? Will you find what Paul is saying in what Jesus said? Okay, now, so look at Matthew 16, 18 to 19. Matthew chapter 16, verse 18 to 19. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Next verse. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Now does that look like identification? Huh? Like a singular entity is said. Now we will see that. So the body itself is a gathering. A gathering. Also in the one church we have churches. In that one church. We have churches used 38 times, almost single-handedly by Paul. Don't forget again that the background of church is in the Jewish scriptures. A people and their constituents coming together. A people and their consistent coming together. The constitution of the people coming together consistently. A people, that's the church. So Paul's theology, therefore... On the ecclesiology here or on the church from where we must see the ministry gifts because we cannot teach the ministry gifts independent of the church the ministry gifts will be as a result of the church so an understanding of the church therefore becomes critical to understand the ministry gifts you must understand the church and you can't understand the church without Moses so we've traveled from Moses and we're moving into Paul and we're coming to Jesus. So there's a consistency of theology spread across the entire body of scriptures. Paul's theology, therefore, will be built on Jewish gatherings and Jesus' promise of his own gatherings. Now the Jewish gatherings is to say that Jehovah is in the midst of his people. They are his people. They bear his name. Then Jesus now comes and says on the foundation of the Jewish gatherings, I will build my church. Same thing. They will bear my name. I will be in their midst. But Jesus speaks of his resurrection. In this instance, in Matthew chapter 18, he now talks of brethren because for it to be ecclesia, they must come from the same father. If you have a problem with your brother, go to him the reason why he uses the word brother is because we are from the same parentage go to him if he refuses to hear you take with you two more people for the mouth of two or three witnesses every word shall be established if he neglects to hear you bring him to the church okay because he is dealing with a common parentage a brotherhood in christ jesus so like the jews have one common ancestor Jesus' ecclesia must have the same father. And this is not possible until the resurrection. Alright? So that's why the writer of Hebrews says, He that sanctifies and they that are sanctified are all of one. For which cause he is not ashamed to call them Adolphus, brethren. Adolphus, the Greek word, brethren. He was quoting, the writer of Hebrews, in that Hebrews chapter 2, was quoting from Psalm 22, verse 22. Put it up for me. Psalms 22, verse number 22. 
I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the congregation will I praise thee. So that's where Hebrew writer quoted from. He quoted from Psalm 22, 22, Hebrews 2, 11 to 12. For both he that sanctified and they that are sanctified are all of one. For which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren. So by virtue of the new birth or new birth, Paul could see that this is the ecclesia of Christ. That the ecclesia of Christ is a family. Because the Jewish nation is also a family. So before the congregation of gathering, the reason why they come together at all is because they are a family. The reason why we gather here this evening is because first of all, we are a family. And once you are in a family, a family gathers together. So which is first? The congregation or the people? The people. So it is the people that forms the congregation. So Paul's theology is such that you are born again into a family. The new birth, therefore, is the constituting of this church. I will build my church. So both Jesus and Paul are taking their vocabulary from Moses. Moses was the one who called that nation of Israel a church, a single people, a church, a common parentage. You know, before then, they were called a single nation. In that instance, they were called a single nation because of Jacob, their father. But Moses now categorically calls them a congregation. The Hebrew word a kualal, kualal, Q-A, L A L A Kualal for seeing what God will do around his son. So this congregation is found in Christ. It is a gathering in Christ. So look at John chapter 2, verse 19. John chapter 2, verse number 19. Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Now, when Jesus said, destroy this temple, the temple is referring to is both the holiest of all and the holy place. Naturally, the Jews congregate around it as where God lived. That's how the Jews congregate around the holy place and the holy of holies, God's dwelling place. Now, the temple fact has been fulfilled already in the incarnation. Please pay attention. The temple fact has been fulfilled already in the incarnation. The word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. The word became flesh. Skinnies. The same word for tabernacle. The word became flesh and tabernacled among us, dwelt among us. So the descent of God into humanity in the incarnation was God dwelling among us. That is the tabernacle theology of Moses. The word becoming flesh. So what John did in John 1.1 1, 1 was he just took Genesis. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Then he took Exodus and the word became flesh. So Genesis, I mean John 1.1 1, 1 is Genesis. John 1.14 is Exodus. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Then verse 14. And the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. Exodus, the tabernacle theology. So, John chapter 1 verse 1 and 14 is a combination of Genesis and Exodus in the writings of brother Paul. Now, where in Exodus 33, the tabernacle was built. Exodus 33. He therefore sees the incarnation as something that has been prefigured from the Old Testament. Now Jesus goes into the temple and he says, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. Of course, they were confused. What did the temple constitute? Where God dwells. 
where God dwells. So it's like Jesus was saying, destroy God and his dwelling. And in three days, I would, that's why they say it was blasphemy. That's why they wanted to stone him. Because in the mind of a Jew, you don't touch the tabernacle. God is living there. In the mind of a Jew. And now Jesus is saying, pull it down. And I will raise it up in three days. Something was going on in the mind of those Jewish people. What did the temple constitute? Apart from a place where God dwelt, it was a place of worship. The tabernacle was a place of worship. Number three, the tabernacle was their gathering together. It was their gathering together. That is the temple theology. So Jesus now says, I will raise it up in three days. When he rose from the dead, look at what he says in John chapter 2 verse 21. John chapter 2 verse number 21. But he spake of the temple of his body. Next verse. When therefore he was risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this unto them. And they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus had said. And they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus had said. Now, did Jesus quote any scripture for them? No. He just said, destroy this temple. There's no scripture like that. But he said, now they believe the scripture. Why? Because Jesus, in telling them to destroy the temple, was explaining to them the temple theology. The moment he rose from the dead, all the truth which he explained to them about the temple before he died came alive. Because the resurrection is an explanation. Don't miss that one. The resurrection of Jesus is an explanation. Number two, the resurrection of Jesus is the message. It's an explanation and the resurrection of Jesus is the message. So all the truth came alive. And from that point, from that particular point, the moment they believe the scriptures... It means the physical housing of God became a mirage to them. It means the moment they believed the scriptures, that physical tabernacle became a fable, a muthos. It became a fable. Christ is now that reality. Because now they have believed the scriptures. They no more saw the temple as where God lives. They now saw the reality of that temple in a person. No more in a building. So that building lost relevance at once when their eyes were opened to the fact that that temple was a hypodegma. It was a physical illustration of a spiritual reality. So the moment they saw the reality that that temple was communicating, the temple became a muthos. The temple became a fable. Now don't forget who taught them to believe. Jesus taught them to believe for 40 days. He is opening the scriptures to them. And they can now see what he meant. That after three days I will raise it up. If you are writing this is a good one to write. That means the reality of Moses' temple is the resurrection of Jesus. The reality of Moses' temple is the resurrection of Jesus. I like the way the writer of Hebrews puts it. Hebrews chapter 8 verse 5. Hebrews chapter 8 verse number 5. Who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things, as Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle. For see, saith he, that thou make all things according to the pattern shewed to thee in the mount. According to the pattern. So that means one of the markers or benchmarks of the teaching of Jesus for his resurrection will be the temple. One of the markers or the benchmark of the teaching of Jesus for his resurrection will be the temple, the temple theology. Can we therefore say together confidently that in Luke 24, 25 to 27 and 44 to 46, Jesus used the temple within those 40 days of teaching to explain his resurrection? Can we say that? Yeah. So the temple is a Greek word, nion. N-A-I-O-N. Nion. 
from the word na na i o na i o and nion is n a i o n from the word n a i o it means to inhabit now this is just by the way you know there are two words used for the temple most of the times there's a word herion h e i r o n is used for the entire building where you have the holiest of all where you have the holy place where you have the tabernacle but here when jesus uses temple he is specific he is referring to the holiest of all destroy this temple holiest of all not just the entire physical structure but the specific place that the jews believe god was living in the holiest of all where god dwells according to the old testament writings the more reason why they were angry you know he didn't use herion if he had used it they would have felt maybe he's saying destroy the outward part of the temple and i will reconstruct or renovate but he used the word nion the inhabited place where god is dwelling in the temple and i will raise up this inhabited place i will build it the same word i will build my church destroy this temple and in three days i will build it same word for i will build my church upon a rock now Hereon, used for the entire building, is used 73 times. Notice something very critical. Only once is it used in the epistles. Out of the 73 times it is used, it is only mentioned only once in the temple. And you should know why. That is in 1 Corinthians 9.13. You can write down for further study at home. Where Paul was referring to the priests of the Old Testament. That was the only place it was ever used. Outside that, the word that is used mostly in the epistles is the word nion. Nion. N-A-I-O-N. Used 45 times. 45 times. The actual holy place. That is the ingredient of the heroes. The actual holy place. And of course, Paul was a major user of this phrase in his writings so that means therefore i will build my church destroy this temple after three days i will raise it up again i will build it again are they saying the same things huh huh i will build my church destroy this temple after three days i will raise it up are they saying the same things okay good so which means therefore in explaining the doxa, in explaining the doxa of the resurrection, Jesus mentioned the temple. The word doxa is the word glory. In explaining the glory of the resurrection, Jesus mentioned the temple. Now in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 16, Brother Paul didn't play around. Brother Paul was too direct in his soonnesses. Read for me 1 Corinthians 3 16. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? Know ye not, Paul had the audacity to say, you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwelleth, not visited, dwelleth, takes up residence in you. You are the house, the abode of God. You are the dwelling place. Now let me ask you, that's not difficult because Jesus already said in John 14 20. Look at the way Jesus said it. John chapter 14 verse number 20. At that day you shall know that I am in the Father and ye in me and I in you. I am in the Father, ye in me, I in you. So when he now says you are the temple, it's the same thing. Jesus already gave the same insight in his teachings before he died. So that lent credence to the nion, N-A-I-O-N. The nion is the believer. The nion is the believer. The dwelling place of God, the holy of holies, is the believer. Look at 1 Corinthians 3.17. 1 
1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse number 17. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. He calls you the holy place. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 19. 1 Corinthians 6 19. <clears throat> What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you? Look at First Corinthians, I mean Second Corinthians chapter 6 verse 16. Second Corinthians chapter 6 verse number 16. And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. I will, and I will be their God and they shall be my people. You are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. I will be their God. They shall be my people. Paul is quoting from Exodus 29.45. He's quoting that exact scripture from Exodus 29 verse 45. Again, the very words of Moses. Now, the moment you use temple, who are you quoting? Moses. The moment you use tabernacle, who are you quoting? Moses. You see the building blocks? In fact, the moment you use glory, who are you quoting? Moses. Let me use, let me add another one. The moment you use Numa or Ruach, the spirit of God, who are you quoting? Moses, the earth was without form void, darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Ruach of God moved upon the face of the waters. That is how he opens Genesis. He starts dropping building blocks. In the beginning, Genesis, heaven, earth, so anywhere you see a teaching on heaven or a mention of heaven, you see a mention of earth, you see a mention of darkness, you see a mention of light, you see a mention of rivers, you're quoting Moses. He laid those building blocks, he, he just dropped them scattered all over. That is what all the other writers from the prophet to Psalms to even Jesus and to the apostles they will rely on those words to build theology on that's why Moses is the foundation he's the genesis of bible teaching am I communicating at all now so you will see his words all over the place so what can we do without Moses brethren is it brethren or brethren what can we do without brother Mo? Ephesians chapter 2 verse 18 to 21. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 18 to 21. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Next verse. Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. Next verse. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Next verse. In whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord. Can you see the way Paul is putting the things together? This is so beautiful. Really beautiful. I mean, look at the basis. Citizens, household of God. Okay? So now, what has Paul done? He has picked temple because temple in Moses' writing was where you can say the heaven and earth coming together the temple was the coming together of the heaven and the earth where god dwells the temple so when you hear temple you are talking about the coming together of heaven and earth in the mosaic theology then for moses temple was the meeting place of god and man temple was the meeting place of God and man in the theology of Moses. Exodus 33. So temple was number one, a place of worship. Number two, a place of prayer. Number three, a place to see and hear God. 
Exodus 33. Don't forget that that, that that becomes necessary when they told Moses, don't let us hear from God. That was why Moses set up the temple. Because God wanted Israel to come, let him talk with them so there will be no intermediary. God didn't want anybody to interfere with his communication with his people. He wanted to treat his people in their rightful position as his children. Talk to them, they talk to him. But Israel said, no, we don't want to be your children. Treat us as stepchildren. Talk to Moses, let Moses talk to us. So Moses now built a temple and began to communicate God's mind of wanting to relate with them directly by putting a temple and house God in a place called Holy of Holies amongst them. All to drive that, that message into the minds of the Jews. So as he always taught them, he now began to teach them in a way they can understand. So look at Jesus' parables and Moses' teaching. Please pay attention. Jesus' parables and Moses' teaching. And of course, teaching was very tough under Jesus because, you know, the people didn't have the kind of understanding. And sometimes it can be difficult to explain very, very heavy concepts, scriptural concepts to a people who, who are very limited in their understanding. It takes, a lot of, it takes a lot of labor to try to get the point across. So the tabernacle, therefore, is Moses prefiguring Christ's incarnation. John 1.14, the word became flesh, our identification also in his resurrection. So brother Paul was right by calling you and I the temple of God. Then he calls us the body of Christ. The temple, that which constitutes Christ. The temple, that which constitutes Christ. Temple, that which indwells God. Jesus said, that word temple is a post-resurrection reality. So Paul takes his verbiage from Jesus' explanation and from Moses' teaching of the temple. Moses himself, after building for them a house in Exodus 33, he now goes and says, show me your glory. Show me your glory. The Lord said to him, no one sees my face. The word panim, panim in the Hebrew and will not leave. That's the way it's written. In the Hebrew. No one sees my face. And will not leave. Your King James says. When you see my face. You cannot leave. But the original Hebrew. Is the word panim. No one sees my face. And will not leave. In other words. God again like Jesus. Jesus did throughout or what he did throughout is campaigning the incarnation the incarnation god is campaigning the incarnation like jesus was campaigning in the four gospels then god says i will hide you in the rock the rock is not a physical place again those are figures of speech then i will let you see my back part Figurative of Moses seeing the incarnation from afar. That's a figure of speech. You will see my back part. So when Moses left that place, he said, The Lord, he is the rock. The Lord, he is the rock. That's why Paul will write, The rock that followed them was Christ. The rock that followed them, 1 Corinthians 10, the rock that followed them was Christ. So that temple is the unbelieving way of saying, God will dwell with men. The temple theology is the unbelieving way of saying, God will dwell with man. Now, can we therefore say that when Jesus took whip and drove out Koboko, he took whip, koboko, oh, kibi, kib, kiboko, okay, kiboko, right? That's Kenya. <laughs> when he took whip and drove out those people who were selling things, can we say it's also figurative? Huh? Yes. 
of driving out merchandisers in the congregation. So a dangerous seed and tap my anointing. No pain, no gain. The bigger your seed, the bigger your meaning. It's a transaction. Jesus took whip and chased them out of the temple. And he's chasing them again today. He's chasing them again out of the temple. I feel like I'm preaching good now. Then Jesus says, my father's house shall be a house of prayer. But you have made it a den of thieves. That gospel is a scam. You have made it a den of thieves. You have made it a house of scammers. A house of scammers. I don't know, I came across a video today. You know, in the afternoon while I was just resting a bit and I just checked my phone and a pastor on 31st December put his leg like this. And all the members were on their knees, passing under his leg. They are crossing over to the new year. If you say sound doctrine is, is no good, you will kneel down like a goat and pass under your pastor's legs. All the members who, everybody crawl like a goat. They'll come and pass from under his legs. That is how he was crossing them under, crossing them over under his legs. I have told you that crossover theology is a scam. You are not crossing over to anywhere. You just slept in the night and woke up in the morning. Like every other day. <laughs> that crossover is a scam. You are not crossing to anywhere. It's just calendar. Tonight again you will cross over to tomorrow. Abi, Tomorrow you will cross over to next tomorrow. So will you be going under your pastor's leg every night? It's a scam. <laughs> My father's house shall be called the house of prayer. Question. Was the temple the house? Well, that means there are two things. Pay attention. Number one, he drove away merchandising from the thought of the believer. He drove it out of the thinking of the believer. You cannot bribe God. You cannot mobilize God. He's not a Nigerian contractor. He, he's your father. You don't pay him to do anything for you. He that spared not his son but gave him up for us all. How shall he not also with him freely give us all things? Freely you have received, freely give. That's the father we have. Everything that comes from him is freely given. So he was driving out the thought of merchandising, selling and buying in the midst of his people. So if you look at it, what Jesus did in the temple, the apostles continued that same teaching in all their letters. That's why Paul would say any preacher that preaches that gain is godliness, withdraw from him. It's a continuation of that theology that Jesus dropped in that in the gospel concerning selling and buying. My house is a house of prayer, a house of petition, a place of worship. So that will go to the individual believer, the company of the saints and the gathering of the saints. So Moses foreseen today the church, the body of Christ, the new creation, the believer. Now so John 1:14 will be the fulfillment in a way that God has come to us. The word became flesh. Now listen to this. Just like the temple was also a place for service, the son of God, after becoming flesh, became a servant. After becoming flesh, became a servant. The son of man came not to be ministered to, but to minister. That's why he came. He came to minister. So ministry is the intent for his coming. He came into man, into humanity to minister. And the same way the ecclesia of Christ. We are sons of God by salvation. Then now we serve God's purpose. We are born into the family of God as his children. And every responsible child 
grows to serve the purpose of the father so ministry is not a choice for the believer ministry is the dna of the believer that is how you were born you were born to do ministry you were born to do it it's in your dna any child of god not doing ministry is suffering from identity crisis he's mentally agitated it means he doesn't know who he is he doesn't know where he belongs. He doesn't know his job description. You are born again to do ministry. You are born again to serve God's purpose. So we are sons. Now we serve our father's purpose. It's a place of the dwelling and also a place of service. A place of dwelling and a place of service. Because the Christ is also a servant. So two things must be fulfilled in the ecclesia. Two things must be fulfilled. Number one, the indwelling of God in his people. And then number two, the people now giving expression to the indwelling of God by service. The people now giving expression to the indwelling of that God in them by serving him to their world in a message. What will now be called the baptism of the Holy Ghost. The spirit within and the spirit upon. The baptism of the Holy Ghost. The indwelling and the spirit upon. You shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon. The spirit upon is for service. The spirit within is for song. You are born of God by his spirit as a son. Then the spirit comes upon you now to give expression to Christ in you, to your generation in a message. I'm teaching good. I said I'm teaching good. So, just like Jesus, two things will constitute the ecclesia just like Jesus. When he was done explaining the gospel and those guys believed what he preached, he now gave them a ministry. When he has taught the twelve the gospel and now they believe, he now say, oh yeah, go into all the world. He gave them a ministry. The moment you believe the gospel and you are saved by Jesus, the next thing he gives you is ministry. And this is for every child of God. Except you are not a child. So the ecclesia, the temple, the body of Christ. And you will notice in a moment. Every time Paul used body of Christ. Three out of four times. He is talking ministry. Every time Paul uses body of Christ. Three out of four times. He is talking ministry. So back again to Matthew 16, 18 and 19. I will build my church and the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. I will give to you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Obviously, that is ministry and service. The keys of the kingdom to bind and to lose is ministry and service. I will build my church in dwelling then I will give you the keys, service. Everywhere you see, you will see these two together. You are born of God. Now, being born of God, you serve his purpose. Pay attention. You serve his purpose. The word oikodomio in the Greek. Oikodomio. He definitely brings to mind that he will be in that church. Because if it is his temple... If that church is his family, if it is his dwelling place, the ecclesiology of Paul's writing must therefore be the congregation of people with Christ in them. Not just gathering. Uh -uh. It will be a congregation of people with Christ in them. That's the church. With Christ in them. Christ the son in them and then Christ the servant in them. Christ the son in them and then Christ the servant which now gives expression to his ministry through the believer. 
to his ministry through the believer. Notice something. In Matthew 18, he now brings in what you can call the men and the activities. The men and the activities. He talks about forgiveness of sins. If a brother offend you, let him take another brother and come to you. Let him come to you first. Okay? That is forgiveness. Then he talks about authority. That the church has authority to declare a brother to be treated like an unbeliever. Authority. Now, as he is saying that, his audience, the immediate audience he was talking to understood him. When he says, if he refuse to hear you, take two or three. If he refuse to hear them, tell it to the ecclesia. Now that phrase, ecclesia, is to the leadership of the synagogue. Because when Jesus was speaking, it was the synagogue that was in existence and the temple. So by the statements of Jesus in itself, he lets us see that the ecclesia will have what we call the elders that will have authority. The ecclesia will have what we call the elders that will have authority. Am I teaching good tonight? Okay. So we will have the body of Christ in Christ. We will have the body of Christ in Christ. And we will have that body of Christ in the gathering. Which now makes it very, very paramount. That an assembly is required. An assembly becomes imperative. Because the very act of the church and ecclesia means a calling out a calling out ecclesia two words ek ek out kalio to call ecclesia those that are called out ek out kalio to call to call out to to call out to now, very vitally, Paul understands that coinage in Greek culture, being a Jew, pay attention here. Paul understands the coinage of church in Greek culture, being a Jew. Two things. Notice that people were called from Egypt to be separate and ecclesia. He also knew from the Greek culture that ecclesia had to do with people in authority, what we call the senate. The Senate, people that are voted by their constituents to come together and decide legal matters and decide constitutional matters on their behalf as to the running of a nation. So among the Greeks, the Ecclesia was a Senate of government that had authority. Among the Jews, the Ecclesia were a people called out of Egypt to the promised land. Paul understood the two cultures. Are you following now? Having understood that, that people were called among other people to make laws and execute judgment. So Paul definitely will use the word ecclesia equally for authority. And so the first thing I want us to see is that the term church is from the Jewish scriptures. That term church is from the Jewish scriptures. It had to do with the people who come out of Egypt. They have a common ancestry. They come out of Egypt. They have a common ancestry. They have the same family. That's why they are called brethren. Then what is unique is that Jehovah was with them. They were called a people of God, Israel. Which prefigures Christ's church. Christ's church. He is in us. He is with us. We are his brethren. He is in us. He is with us. We are his brethren. You know, a lot of us just grew and joined church. We don't even know what church is. So in our mind, we have our own our own innovation of that word church. And it's critical for me as your pastor 
to take you through the rudiments from the historical background to the grammatical analysis and to the theology of it. So in your mind, you are very clear about what in the mind of God the church is. And what is to be found in the church. And how ministry gifts developed in the church. So you can be in the will of God without a shadow of confusion. Am I teaching here? Please, are you following what I'm doing here? It's very, 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 very critical. So there's a lot of unlearning going on in your mind and a lot of relearning. Because we are dealing with the historical, the grammatical, we're dealing with the spiritual implications and we're looking at the cultures and then situating God's mind in this institution called the church of Jesus. Praise God. I say praise God. So when Paul uses soma for Christ, soma, he means that Christ is his church by identification. He is in us. We are in him. So he calls it one body. He is in us. We are in him. So Paul calls all of us together one body. No doubt. But Jesus is teaching himself where I am there you will be also in John chapter 14. Then John chapter 15 he says I am the true vine. My father is the husband man. You are the branches. Still dealing with the same thing. You are the branches. That already lends credence to Paul using the term one body. So therefore you cannot teach ecclesiology outside the words of Moses. When you look at Paul's discipline, he taught all those things from Moses' writings. So when Moses gave instructions for discipline in Israel, the people who carried out the discipline were also known. It's not everybody that disciplined people. It has to also be known. So pay attention. In Moses' congregation, we have two classifications. We have the general assembly and we have the leadership. We have the general assembly, then we also have the leadership. In Exodus 18, Moses the deliverer brings out a whole nation out of Egypt. Then his father-in-law by the name of Jethro comes visiting and Jethro saw him. Read for me Exodus chapter 18 verse 13. Exodus chapter 18 verse number 13. And it came to pass on the morrow that Moses sat to judge the people. And the people stood by Moses from the morning until the evening. The people stood by Moses from the morning till the evening. So Jethro, <laughs> Jethro comes to see Moses. Now that word judge, to judge the people. It's not judge in English. Oh. That word judge yeah, means to teach. That's the meaning of judge. To teach. To give wisdom and discernment by instruction. To teach. To give wisdom and discernment by instruction. Now, pay attention. Exodus 18, verse 14 to 16. Exodus 18, 14 to 16. And when Moses' father-in-law saw all that he did to the people, he said... What is this thing that thou doest to the people? Why sittest thou thyself alone, and all the people stand by thee from morning unto even? Next verse. And Moses said unto his father-in-law, Because the people come unto me to inquire of God. Next verse. When they have a matter, they come unto me, and I judge between one and another, and I do make them know the statutes of God and his laws. I judge between them, but the key thing is, I am teaching them. The statues of God. That's the key thing there. I am teaching them. Now at this point. What was he teaching them? Because at this point the ten commandments were, were not given. So what was he teaching them? The statues of God. <laughs> What's that? What was he teaching them? Well. He was teaching them the message of faith. That preceded them. 
the message of the gospel that was found in the mouth of Abel. The message of the gospel that was found in the mouth of Enoch, in the mouth of Noah, in the mouth of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and of course, the message of the gospel that was found in the mouth of Joseph. That is what he was teaching them. The gospel in the mouth of Abel, in the mouth of Enoch, in the mouth of Noah, in the mouth of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and of course, in the mouth of Joseph. He taught them all through the day. Now, Exodus 18, 17, and 18. Look at the good counsel there that Jethro gives him. And Moses' father-in-law said unto him, The thing that thou doest is not good. Next verse. Thou wilt surely wear away both thou and this people that is with thee. For this thing is too heavy for thee. Thou art not able to perform it thyself alone. So now, if you observe later on, Moses quoted this same thing to God. Moses told God, eh? I'm not able to carry it alone. Later on. Okay. Now look at verse 19 to 23. Read for me. 19 to 23 of that Exodus. Hearken now unto my voice. I will give thee counsel and God shall be with thee. Be thou for the people to God word that thou mayest bring the causes unto God. And thou shalt teach them ordinances and laws and shalt show them the way therein where they must walk and the work that they must do. Next verse. Moreover, thou shalt provide out of all the people able men such as fear God, men of truth, hating covetousness, and place such over them to be rulers of thousands and rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties and rulers of tens. Next verse. And let them judge the people at all seasons, and it shall be that every great matter they shall bring unto thee, but every small matter they shall judge, so shall it be easier for thyself, and they shall bear the burden with thee. Next verse. If thou shalt do this thing, and God command thee so, then, th then thou shalt be able to endure, and all these people shall also go to their place in peace. Then thou shalt be able to endure. That is, you will live long. Okay, you will live long. Read for me verse 24 to 26 of the same chapter. 24 to 26. So Moses hearkened to the voice of his father-in-law and did all that he had said. Next verse. And Moses chose able men out of all Israel and made them heads over the people, rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of tens. Next verse. And they judged the people at all seasons, the hard causes they brought unto Moses, but every small matter they judged themselves. Now notice this. When he says that he taught them the laws of God, I told you the laws were not given, even the Ten Commandments. He said they will head over the people, the word rosh. In the Hebrew, R-O-S-H, Rosh. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 13 for me. Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 13. Take you wise men and understanding and known among your tribes and I will make them rulers over you. I will make them rulers over you. The word wise there, wise, is the word chakam. Chakam in the Hebrew. C-H-A-K-A-M. It means discerning discerning that are known men that are known is the hebrew word yada yada y-a-d-a-h that word they are no, that are known means experienced men experienced not known like know somebody is bible language experienced men men who are experienced now take note of these terms Men of understanding and men of experience. Now let's go back to Exodus 19, 3 and 4 and 5. Exodus chapter 19, verse 3, 4 and 5. And Moses went up unto God, and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel. Next verse. Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bear you on eagles' wings and brought you unto myself. Verse 5. Read verse 5a for me. Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, yes. then Read. ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. Take note of my voice. If you will obey my voice. The word voice there. And keep my covenant is the gospel. That's the meaning of voice. 
if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant he was making reference to the gospel now read for me girl verse 5 and 6 of that exodus 19 now therefore if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people for all the earth is mine next verse pay attention here church and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. So that means the, the priesthood of Aaron was an afterthought. The plan of God was not the priesthood of Aaron. The plan of God was everybody a priest. But since they rejected, then the priesthood of Aaron came in as a temporary measure. But the original plan is every man a minister. The priesthood was for all believers. Every child of God, your destination in life is ministry. It's ministry. I've told you that many times. But now I have to doctrinally show you. So that beyond every shadow of doubt, you will do ministry like there is no tomorrow. Because that is why you were born and created. Are we teaching here? Okay. So... The priesthood of Aaron was an afterthought. That priesthood was an afterthought. And uh, in, in Deuteronomy 33 verse 2, read for me. Deuteronomy chapter 33 verse number 2. And he said, the Lord came from Sinai and rose up from Seir unto them. He shined forth from Mount Paran and he came with ten thousands of saints. From his right hand went a fiery law for them. From his right hand went a fiery law for them that is a prophecy now before i explain the prophecy part of that scripture the reason why in bible days they use thousands thousands the lord will come with his thousands <laughs> is because in those days there was nothing like millions or billions the highest they knew was thousands in their vocabulary so when they say thousands what they mean is a terminology for innumerable numbers. Now read for me 32 verse 3 of Deuteronomy. I mean 33 verse 3 of Deuteronomy. Yea, he loved the people. All his saints are in thy hand. And they sat down at thy feet. Everyone shall receive of thy words. Everyone shall receive of thy words. This is a prophecy about a church. That is a church of ministers. A church where every member is a minister. So when God now opened his mind to them, I want to make all of you ministers. What was their response to God? Exodus 20, 19. Exodus chapter 20 verse 19. And they said unto Moses, Speak thou with us and we will hear. But let not God speak with us lest we die. We don't want to talk to God. We don't want to answer the call. We don't want to do ministry. Let us have men of God that we hear from God and tell us. And then when we tell them, they can tell God. That was not the plan of God at all. And that's what's obtainable in many churches today. Believers don't talk to God. They talk to their men of God who talk to God and then bring answers from God to them. <laughs> that is, you be our mediator. They were a people of unbelief. However, don't forget again, Moses prefigures the church. Moses prefigures Christ and safely so. Paul will say you are the temple of God. By saying that, he incorporates all Moses predicted and foreshadows. Now pay attention. Notice again the mind of God. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 5 to 9. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse number 5 to 9. Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Next verse. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Sion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Next verse. Unto you therefore which believe he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. Next verse. And a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, 
whereunto also they were appointed. Next verse. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, an holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Is this exactly what God wanted? So now in Christ, it has become a reality. You are a royal. Every one of you is a royal priesthood. So all of you are priests. All of you are ministers. All of you are men and women of God. See, I hear you. Every one of you. Every one of you. Online, on radio, on TV. Wherever you're hearing the sound of my voice physically in this building. You are a royal priesthood. Revelation chapter 1 verse 5 and 6. Revelation chapter 1 verse 5 and 6. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. So after washing us and loving us and, and all of that with his blood, next verse. And hath made us kings and priests unto God and his father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Priests, service, kings, authority. He has given us the keys of the kingdom. So now we can serve his purpose. He has made us priests unto our God. So what, what have they done? They have taken from the words of Moses and they have seen the church. The church will be a people that have believed. Now Exodus 12, 20, 18, 21 mark it out and write, write just put Exodus 18, 21. If your Bible is yours, underline the whole verse. Read for me, Exodus 18, 21. Moreover, thou shalt provide out of all the people able men, such as fear God, men of truth, hating covetousness, and place such over them to be rulers of thousands and rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties and rulers of tens. So when you mark that verse, put beside it doctrine. Doctrine. Did you notice that the summary of what Moses said he will do to Israel is to teach. To teach. So Jethro now tells him, you are now going to choose people who will be elders over the people. They will be the rush. Now look at that Exodus again. 18.21. Read for me, girl. Exodus 18.21. Moreover, thou shalt provide out of all the people able men such as fear God. So take note, able men such as fear God, read on. Men of truth. Men of truth. Hating covetousness. Hating covetousness. And place such over them to be rulers of thousands and rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties and rulers of tens. In First Timothy chapter 3, is this what Paul expantiated as the qualification for a bishop? Exactly, from Moses' theology. Because you won't find Jesus giving qualifications. He did in terms of commitment and sacrifice. Okay, you follow me, you take your cross, you follow me. He that is not going to follow me is not worthy of me. All those is Jesus giving you qualifications, but not the type that Paul gave, you know, from Moses' theology. Jesus just gave you the key things. If you are committed and you take up your cross, then you will keep these other qualifications. He gives you the major ones. Commitment and sacrifice. Okay. Now he says hating covetousness. Men of truth who fear God. Is it the same thing we have in Acts chapter 6 verse 3? Acts chapter 6 verse number 3. Read for me. Acts chapter 6 verse number 3. Wherefore brethren look ye out among you seven men of honest report full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. Is it the same? So both Timothy and Acts 6, they are all writing from who? Moses. Exodus 18. Now, that Exodus 18, by using the word teach or judge, teach or judge, is the word Zahar. Z-A-H-A-R. Zahar. To teach or judge. Z A. H-A-R. It means to shine the light. It means to shine the light. And if you're observant, you will notice that all Moses is doing here was replicated in the epistles. Everything Moses was doing in these Jewish writings was replicated 
in the epistles. And it is not unfounded because the knowledge of the ecclesia is from Moses or the writers of the Old Testament. Read again for me. Are you still in the building? Good, 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 good. Numbers eleven sixteen. Numbers chapter 11 verse 16. And the Lord said unto Moses, Gather unto me seventy men of the elders of Israel, whom thou knowest to be the elders of the people. Underline elders in your Bible. Read on, girl. And officers over them, and bring them unto the tabernacle of the congregation, that they may stand there with thee. You know, we have seen elders already, who will be over thousands, hundreds, tens, and fifties. Did we see all of that? Good. Now he is now choosing from that group of elders what we call Zagen. Zagen. Z-A-G-E-N. He called them officers. Elders. Officers. Whom thou knowest to be the elders of the people. The word know again is whom you have experienced to be the elders of the people. Which means that of the ones he chose in Exodus 18, you remember? 70 men, okay? He is now to choose the ones that are faithful among them who will stand with him. The word Zagen is used for short-term officers. You will see that word in Exodus 3, 6 and Exodus 5, 15. Exodus 3, 6 and Exodus 5, 15. Officers of the children of Israel, those who are serving in an official capacity. Read for me again Exodus chapter 24, verse 1. Exodus Chapter 24, verse 1. And he said unto Moses, Come up unto the Lord, thou and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel, and worship ye afar off. So apparently the first time in Exodus 18, he chose 70 people. And he maintains that number in number 16. Now, <clears throat> a bit parallel to what Jesus did. Jesus picked 12, picked 70 afterwards. Now don't make any any spirituality out of it okay so he picked 70 numbers eleven seventeen. numbers chapter 11 verse 17 and i will come down and talk with thee there and i will take up the spirit which is upon thee and will put it upon them and they shall bear the burden of the people with thee that thou bear it not thyself alone i will take the spirit that is on you moses and i will put it on them i will not put my spirit on them Moses, your spirit, because you are the one with the vision and the mandate. I will take the spirit on you. So what one man is supposed to do, 70 people will now do it. Okay? Now, pay attention here. Now, notice in verse 25, Numbers 11.25. Numbers 11.25. And the Lord came down in a cloud and spake unto him and took up the spirit that was upon him and gave it unto the seventy elders. And it came to pass that when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied and did not cease. They prophesied when the spirit came on them. They prophesied. Actually, the original Hebrew there is they prophesied and ceased. They prophesied and ceased. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> did not see why they prophesy forever <laughs> now notice Joshua complained you know every pastor will have a Joshua Joshua came in and said sir sir the spirit is supposed to come on 70 people but it entered two extra people who are not part of the 70 sir and those two people are prophesying like the 70. Sir, it's not official. Because they are not among those that have ID cards. Those two don't have ID cards. <laughs> there are people that like reporting everything. You keep reporting. Even things that should not be reported. Now watch, watch, watch. <laughs> Verse 26 to 28. Read for me, girl. 26 to 28, same chapter. 
But there remained two of the men in the camp. The name of the one was Eldad, and the name of the other Medad. And the spirit rested upon them, and they were of them that were written, but went not out unto the tabernacle, and they prophesied in the camp. Next verse. And there ran a young man and told Moses, and said, Eldad and Medad do prophesy in the camp. Next verse. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of Moses, one of his young men, answered and said, My Lord Moses, forbid them. Forbid them, Moses. Stop them. They did not pass <laughs> the screening exercise. <laughs> Stop them, Moses. They don't have a cassock. Moses, they didn't go to sem seminary or cemetery. They didn't go to... <laughs> In Shambhag, there is a call it cemetery. <laughs> you don't like Shambhag, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay read for me verse 29 same chapter verse 29 and Moses said unto him envious thou for my sake would God that all the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord would put his spirit upon them my prayer is every man a minister that's been the plan are you envying for me I want all of them not only that too even everybody in the camp should prophesy that's the plan. That's the plan. Every child of God has a ministry and every child of God must answer that ministry to fulfill the purpose of God for his or her life. No place for floor members. Every man a minister. That's the plan. Everybody preaching the gospel, raising men, building disciples. Everybody building campuses and opening lighthouses everywhere and taking the gospel of Christ. That's the plan from the beginning of time, from the genesis of God's plan. Teaching good tonight. I want God to put the spirit on everybody. So what is in the mind of God? The entire congregation will be elders. What is in the mind of God? Everybody will be able to teach the things that thou hast heard of me. I'm, I'm rushing too fast. Everybody will be able to teach. What again is in the mind of God? They will prophesy. Now, this bunch were from where Moses chose the spies. In Numbers 13, you know, you know we've been reading that. So you can see that there was no emergency leader. People were known People were proven to be tested and trusted. No fly by night. People were known. People were tested. People were trusted. From prayer crews, we saw you praying. We went to crusade. You were there arranging chairs. And when it was time to pray for the sick, you were laying hands on the sick. When it was time for discipleship, you were there teaching disciples. We are watching your spiritual antecedents. We must have a record that is a signal that you are being properly arranged to do ministry that will last. Not all this sit and run. You come to church when you want, you don't come when you don't want. You cannot fulfill ministry like that. No minister is raised like that. There is discipline, there is tenacity, there is consistency, that is, there is commitment to spiritual activities that defines ministry out of a man. It's not just anyhow. And any minister that avoids the training, the training is not a smiling training. It will stretch your body. It will stretch you. It will make you uncomfortable. It will inconvenience you. It will interrupt your plans. Because that is the way God raises ministers. Moses, God interrupted his plan. Joseph, God interrupted his plan. Abraham, Isaac, all of them. Everyone that has answered the call of God and fulfilled ministry. His life plan has been interrupted. If you don't want God to interrupt your plan, Satan will interrupt. Two of you will partner together. You must decide who you want to partner with you. But your plans will be interrupted somewhere, somehow by somebody. So it's even better that you allow God to interrupt your plan so he can situate you in his plan. Listen carefully. God does not bless your plan. He blesses his plan. 
God does not bless your plan. He blesses his own plan. So, Kebayonaga, yesterday I was talking to the pastors that came from the branches. I said to them, a discovery of God's plan is the blessing. Once you discover God's plan, you don't pray for God to bless it. Discovering the plan of God is the blessing for your life. You don't bless what is already blessed. You don't look for what is not lost. You don't live light and pray for light. When you are in light, you don't pray for light. You walk in the light. You don't bless what has already been blessed. Am I teaching here? Yeah. So, discovering God's plan is the blessing. You don't pray, oh God, bless, bless your plan in my life. It's already blessed. That's why you discovered it. So, God does not bless your plan. He blesses his plan. The blessing is in his plan. Yours is to discover that plan which you are doing right now and walk in that plan. Live in that plan and fulfill that plan of God. Because once you discover it, all the abilities, all the enablements, all the resources at your beck and call to help you fulfill that plan. God's plan has already been self-supplied. He has self-supplied his plan. Everything you need within his plan has been supplied. And God is only responsible, not for your plan, but for his plan. God is not responsible for your plan. You are responsible for your plan. God is responsible for his plan. He supplies his plan. He protects his plan. He defends his plan. He preserves his plan. So when you are in his plan, protection is automatic. Preservation is automatic. Blessing is automatic. In his plan, he sees to it that everything that is required is supplied. Because no one goes to war at his own charge. The safest place you can be is in the plan of God. That's the safest. And that plan of God is ministry. That's the plan of God for your life. Who will have all men? That's the will of God for you. To be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. I'm teaching good tonight. So, Numbers 13, 1 to 3 as a round of this service. Are you blessed tonight? Numbers 13, 1 to 3. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Next verse. Send thou men that they may search the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel. Of every tribe of their fathers shall ye send a man, every one a ruler among them. Next verse. And Moses, by the commandment of the Lord, sent them from the wilderness of Paran. All those men were heads of the children of Israel. Heads. That word, heads of the children of Israel, is the word Rosh, R O S H. So we can say that he was choosing from the same crowd. That's 70. So the same crowd taught. They taught. The same crowd judged the people. They were overseers over the people. And the same crowd were prophets. From that crowd he picked spies who will go and confirm what happened at Canaan. And report. And again, this is the ecclesia of Moses, the church. Then Paul in 1 Corinthians 10 relates that with the church. It happened to them for examples. 1 Corinthians 10, 11 to 13, you can read at home. A key word here which must not be lost in our study is the word elders and rulers. Write it in capital letters. Elders and rulers. We shall get into that tomorrow. Elders and rulers. Because until now we have been having singular men of which Moses was one of them. Abel was one of them. Noah was one of them. Enoch was one of them. Abraham was one of them. Isaac was one of them. Jacob was one of them. Joseph was one of them. But for the first time, there was now what you can call a plurality of leadership that never happened before. 70 men, plurality of leadership. Keep that in view. It will be handy in the next few days. 
So notice that the issue of priesthood in Exodus 19, which was rejected, and then they had to have an emergency priesthood called Aaron. When Jesus showed up, he rusticated the Aaron priesthood. He put an end to it because that's not the plan. That's not the plan. He removed it out of the way. He took it out. Because that's not the plan. Shakuladaba. As Ezekiel and the Bobos. I want to close this service. So now take this. Paul drops that phrase carefully. In fact, Paul hardly used the priesthood expression. When he was referring to rewards, was the only place he mentioned priesthood. Only John and Peter used the word priesthood. And we will find out tomorrow. Paul never did. But don't forget Peter and John already told us all believers are priests. So being born again is being born into the priesthood. Being born again is being born into the priesthood of God's family. We saw it in Revelation 1, 5 and 6. 1 Peter 2, 5 to 10. So we now have, as it were, in the ecclesia of the Old Testament, one type of leadership. Moses, an elder, because he's the ruler of the people. He now duplicates what he did amongst the 70. Every man a minister. Let me close with Hebrews chapter 7. So you know that uh, Aaron is gone. No more Aaronic priesthood. You know Aaron priesthood is those churches where they will say, are you called? There are some people that are called. Others are not called. It is only those that are called that go to Bible school. Then they come out as men of God with a collar because they are called. That's Aaron. Jesus rusticated it. Now, every believer, when you are born again, you are born into the priesthood. You are born a man of God. Don't your neighbor say, I'm a man of God. Say it well. Say it well. Speak it unapologetically. Say the call of God is on my life. The grace of God is on my life. And I will serve my generation. Hebrews chapter 7 verse 11. Get read for me. If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, what further need was there that another priest should rise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron? Next verse. For the priesthood being changed, there is made of necessity a change also of the law. Priesthood has changed. No more Aaron. No more. You don't have to have a special calling. Salvation is the calling. Priesthood has changed. Read for me, girl. We have not finished your next verse. For he of whom these things are spoken pertaineth to another tribe, of which no man gave attendance at the altar. Next verse. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. Our Lord scattered it. Our Lord came out of Judah, of which tribe? No, Moses did not say anything about priesthood. So Jesus is the first to come out of a tribe where priests don't come out of. And we are in the lineage of Jesus. So the moment you are born again, you are a priest. Read for me, girl. And it is yet far more evident, for that after the similitude of Melchizedek, there ariseth another priest. Next verse. Who is made not after the law of a carnal commandment, but after the power of an endless life. Your priesthood is eternal, because you have received the life of God. So you are a priest of God till we see Jesus. You are a priest of God for eternity. Touch your neighbor and say, hey priest, priest of the most high. Kabayada, stand on your feet tonight. Turn to your neighbor and say, priest of the most high God. Say with me, I'm a priest. Not just a priest, I'm a royal priest. After the order of Jesus Christ.
I am after the pattern of an endless life. In Christ Jesus, I'm called by God. I serve the purpose of God. I do ministry unapologetically. The call of God is upon my life. Therefore, I serve that calling. I serve that purpose. I answer to that call. And I live out the realities of that call. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I pray for you tonight. That you are filled with the knowledge of God's will. In all wisdom and spiritual understanding. You walk worthy of the Lord. Unto all pleasing. I call you fruitful. Unto every good work. I declare right now. You are strengthened with might. By the spirit. In the inner man. Christ dwells in your heart by faith. You are rooted, grounded, established by teaching. By teaching. What you have been taught, you are going forth to teach others. You walk in the light. You walk in the light. Zakora Tokele Nemosh. Get a partner. Let's pray for one another tonight. You do ministry. Nothing will distract you. You do ministry. Your eyes on the ball. You do ministry. Nothing will stop you. No limit. No barrier. No barricade. No obstacles. Legaroto Shikambanangalato Bosa. Legarada Dada. Legalanda Bosha Keleta Bababa. You walk worthy of the Lord. Unto all pleasing. You walk in the light. 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 He sent a word into Jacob and it has lightened the nation of Israel. The light of God's word in your heart illuminates the nations. It illuminates the nations. Leka roto shika lana mana koto menge naga engelere bo shaka tote tata. Ministry finds expression. Ministry finds expression through you. The mandate finds expression. You preach the gospel. You declare the mind of God. You raise men all over the nations of the earth. You are unmovable. You are steadfast. You are always abounding in the work of the Lord. You are strengthened with might. You are filled with the fullness of God. You walk worthy of the Lord. The gospel has free course through you. The gospel has free course through you. You are set over nations. You are set over kingdoms to root out, to pull down, to overthrow, to destroy. The sentence of God in your mouth. You declare God's word. You have a mouth and a wisdom that cannot be resisted. No gainsaid. As you open your mouth and you declare God's word. God's word goes forth with power. The gospel through you goes forth with power. By your hand. Millions are established all over the nations of the earth. Rikato siamana. Legarodo shekia, gaga yanangaga, agande gele de boshanganga, egelena no nana, 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 ange nago satata, agarato shikala nama, lebro sakata tata. You will run and not be weary. Through the course of this year, for the remaining days of your life, you are a terror to the kingdom of darkness. You are God's battle axe. You are God's weapon of war. Through your mouth, the gospel will break frontiers. Through your mouth, the gospel penetrates nations. Through your mouth, the gospel destroys darkness. As you stretch forth your hand, healing flows. As you open your mouth, the gospel is preached. Men and women are coming to the knowledge of the truth. Anga suyana, anga suyana. Agaregede shongala tatata agazobe reketena agarobe zegereta babaregede shotola tata engebo satalaba as you declare the word of God whatever is not planted is rooted all over the nations agaragadash katata through the power of God's word nations are submitting men and women are coming to the knowledge of the truth I come against oppression I come against deception I come against delusion the 
the God of this world that blinds the minds of men. Their minds are liberated. Laborers are released. Oh Lord of the harvest, you are raising laborers. You are pushing laborers. You are raising men. You are pushing men out. Men that will preach the gospel. Men that are not afraid. Men that are not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Men and women that are fired up and empowered by the spirit of Christ. The Lord walking with us. Anga Sulana, Anga Sulana, Anga Sulana. Nations are opening up. The hearts of men are stirred up. People are willing. An army of men, an army of women that are not afraid, that are not ashamed. Anga Sulada, Anga Sulada. Conviction is growing. Persuasion is growing. Angeredo Sotala. Revelation knowledge. The eyes of our understanding is being enlightened. There is a floodlight of revelation. There is a floodlight of insight in our mind, in our understanding. Eyando shaka tatea alabatunda 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 alabatunda. Esokalaba. Open your mouth and declare. We are not of they that draw back. We keep pushing forward. No distraction. No distraction. You are healthy, you are strong. Your body is strong. Your body is a machine for the gospel. Your body is a gospel machine. Your organs are alive. Every fiber of your body is quickened. Disease cannot survive. The power of God is at work in your body. The power of God is at work in your members. Your body cooperates with God's healing power. You lack no resource. The word of the Lord has free course in the nations of the earth. And the word of the Lord is glorified even as it is with us. Angel Lito Shanda, Angel Lito Shanda, Angel Lito Shanda, Ela Bababaya. Lose those hands and begin to pray for yourself. Nobody can pray for you better than yourself. Lose those hands and pray for yourself. Leano Nananana. The zeal of God's house. The zeal for ministry. The zeal to serve God. The zeal to serve God's purpose. The zeal to live out the mandate. The zeal to walk in the will of God. The zeal to walk in the plan of God. The zeal to walk in the assignment of God. The zeal to walk in the purpose of God. It's being carried out. It's being established. It's being executed. It's being implemented through my hands. I serve God. I serve God with all my heart. I serve God in the gospel of his son. I serve God with my spirit. I labor. Angalota shaka. Angalata shoko. Angalata shoko. I give myself to labor in word and in doctrine. I give myself to labor in the ministry. I raise men. I raise women. Angashotalaraba. Strengthened. Refreshed. Empowered. Energized. My resilience. Unabated. And fired up consistently in and out of season i'm focused i'm focused i'm sold out agayando shakaya ala batata tete ala barakato sakaya ale no go sanda ale zoko sanda ale zoko sanda pray for yourself neya la basota What happened to Demas cannot happen here. We set our affections on things above. Where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. We set our affections on things above. Where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. We are created in righteousness and through holiness. After God. After the image of him that created him. We walk worthy. We are fruitful. We are fruitful. 
Agaleta Kona, Agaleta Kona, Agaleta Kona. As I preach the word, the Lord confirming his word with signs and wonders. The Lord confirming his word with signs and wonders. Nations are opening up, communities are opening up, cities are opening up, villages are opening up. The gospel is penetrating, universities are opening up. Men and women are coming to the knowledge of the truth. Egalaba Sutalaba, Lekando Shata, Agasolaba, 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 Ala Sogaba, Ala Sogaba, Angelerebo Shata, Ela Sokalaba. Raise those hands and begin to give him praise. Raise those hands and begin to give him praise. Silo tatate. Silo tatate. Silo tatate. Silo tatate. Raconda galadabash. Raconda la barakatunas. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I declare over you through the course of this year and for the remaining days of your life, your affections are set on things above. Where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Your affections are set on ministry. Your passion is burning like fire. Unquenchable fire. Your passion is burning like fire. Oh, the zeal of God's house has consumed you. You are aglow. You are on fire. None shall be distracted among us. Your body is healthy your body is stronger receive boldness 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 you preach the word of God with boldness you declare the testimony of God with boldness. You stretch your hands, you heal the sick. You open your mouth, men cannot resist the power. Men cannot withstand the power. You open your mouth, men submit to the power of the gospel. In the name of Jesus, barriers broken, barricades broken, pillars broken, op opposition broken. Cities have opened up. Nations are opening up. Communities are opening up. Universities are opening up. The world is going like fire. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for grace. Your body is healthy and strong this year. Your body is a gospel machine. I'd like you to touch your body and say you are a gospel machine. Speak to your body. Say it. Say it. Say it to your body. Say it to your body. You are a gospel machine. You are bought with a price. You are a gospel machine. My body, you serve the purpose of God. My body, you serve the will of God. My body, you serve the agenda of God. My body, you serve the purpose of Christ. Leonono Sakata Barat. Sakata Barash. Sakata Barash. Sakata Barash. Sakata Barash. Sickness and disease cannot stay there. Liano Shakalaraba. Thank you, Father. It is done. If you believe it is done, let me hear a victory shout in the house. Glory!